I want to talk about a few today and, you know, take any questions. So I don't plan to do anything kind of um, anything new. So um, let me just point out that uh, I did end up posting solutions to homework four and five. Um, but <clears throat> so you can get it from eCollege. Um, and I think, you know, um, some of the problems in the take home part of the exam will require you to use, um, I guess, B-plane or some, some sort of computer, you know, almost exclusively. But other parts will not. So um, I, I just gave it more as a template here. But <clears throat> so, so you'll find the solutions here. Okay, let me. Um, open up the solutions. Oh yeah, and I, I gave you solutions to homework 6-2. Okay. Um, and they're posted in the companion too. Um, so, again, the plan for today would be to uh, kind of go over key parts of this uh, review. <coughs> and I was already told that uh, I have some manual typo um, in problem number three, which we kind of did in class part A and part B was um, just the inclusion of, of some um, friction, right? Friction term. So let me say from the beginning in this um, type of problems, I think I've seen this in your homework. Um, over and over again. I mean, when you you're able to set up this uh, as a princi maximal principle, pr on tracking maximal principle, right? So that was that was good news. But along the way, you kind of trickled a minus sign or you know extraneous uh, extraneous sign or or, or something, um, which kind of messes up the whole computation. Um, Especially when you have to, when you deal with the objective functions. If you have to minimize an objective function and you don't switch the signs to, max, to, to get it into that maximum principle, right? Then you get things, um, I guess the better, better one was the homework number six. Let's see if I can. Which you have, which I give you the solution. So, uh, stopped working, and Windows is checking for a solution. Great. <laughs> okay. Well, things happen. Um, it's a Firefox feature. Yeah, <laughs> new feature. Okay, so well, you have the solutions here, so I can just point to uh, second problem. Uh, excuse me, the first problem, which in which you had to minimize something. So, so if you don't from the get go uh, change that into a maximization problem, instead of decelerating, you probably accelerate. <laughs> It's one of those Toyota problems, right? Um, you, I mean, you get it kind of um, upside down, and and uh, and you're, you know, you're not going to actually get anything like. It's not like you put a minus at the at the, at the uh, final answer and you're you fix the problem, okay? So if you don't change this into a minus sign, so that the psi one, for instance, the adjoint variable has to end up with negative one rather than with positive one, right? And all the other, uh, you know, rather complicated um, computations, right? So you have to be kind of very careful and, and, and read the problem. So you want to maximize always when you fit it in that, in that scheme, OK? Um,
Now again, mistakes kind of happen, of course, when you're on an exam. So, you, but but try to minimize those, and if you know, you will by going kind of slowly and and doing it, you know, the first steps, so the setting up the problem correctly, you'll kind of minimize that. And you know, if you have a wrong sign later on, that that's that's more minor than if you if you have if you start with the wrong problem. Okay. Yeah. And are we going to be allowed that yellow? Yeah, you'll have that. Okay. I can give you any color you want, um, but yeah. So the important thing is, is yeah. And on in class exam, you should be able to. Um, I mean, that should help with Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, right. That's why seeing that always. I mean, having having it as a reference is good. Um, okay, so now also an important. Uh, part here is is when you get the optimal control, it's always good if you can to to visualize it. Okay. Now, if it's hard to do it by hand, yeah, of course you have to go to a graphing calculator or something. Uh, which, by the way, I won't I won't ask you to do on the exam, so don't bring your graphing calculators. Um, but if it's you know if it's fairly simple, and I'm talking about the you know the take home part or the homework part to plot to, like to graph this function you don't have to go to MATLAB and plot it I've seen that like started writing codes and codes and plotting this thing and okay and and of course you didn't plot it for the only for the time period that the problem is you know from zero to capital T you plot it from much larger one. so I made a note in the homework um, okay of course when you get to something like this you by hand would be um, ridiculous, right? To to plot so. Um, so you use a computer. Now, I think when it when it gets to when you have friction, uh, then you see that even the control has to kind of adjust to that new situation, right? Um, I'm not saying this is obvious that this is right and doing the control opposite, like increasing control, would be wrong, would be obviously not right as the optimal. But again, these things are, you know, in the homework, when you, um, when you started with the wrong sign of your functional, so when you, when you started with minimizing, and then you did maximization without putting the minus in front, and you got the, um, the control to be going opposite direction, right? Like increasing, for instance. It's hard to tell, right? It's hard to, to kind of uh, uh, um, verify or, or have the intuition that this is one way or the other, right? So that's why it's important to kind of, the setup has, is, is extremely critical. Okay? And that's why you're going to be tested in class on setting up these problems, right? Okay? Solving them, again, it may take um, you know, it may take actually, um, like you, you saw in this second problem, it may take quite a, a, a considerable amount of time. Okay, um, second problem I've seen, everything I've seen was what I, I usually wrote down as qualitative reasoning, which is is good, but it's based on just the picture. Okay, I'm, my picture is not right, it's not very... Um, okay, but it's one thing to kind of say, well, uh, remember, I think you've, you've had to deal with um, change in the initial population of the, f this was a fishing problem, so you had to change uh, harvesting, excuse me, in the fish population. Uh, you change the initial population of the fish, right? And it's true that intuitively, or I mean, or visually, or qualitatively, you can almost, you can say what, what needs to happen, right? Like, for instance, you know that if you start with 50,000, then you have to start in this region rather than in this region, because in this region, the X population keeps decreasing, right? And so Psi goes further negative, you're never going to be able to reach zero, okay? Um, so you have to start with the no fishing and let the population kind of um, replenish for a while and maybe f for the whole year, right? 
Um, but that's only quantitatively. To, to actually get this quantitatively, what do you need to do? You need to start solving some differential equations. Okay? So, um, so I think in the, in the example in that handout, original handout, it was with 150,000, you have to do full fishing, right? And then we saw that with, with U equals capital whatever E was, 5,000 or something, right? And there was a separable equation, right? Ordinary differential equation. You have that handout, right? The original problem. Uh, in here, though, you have to switch to, or you have to look at the system that has U equals zero and solve you know that system for x and for psi okay the system for x is simply what is this equation called just a logistic equation right just the equation right that you need to solve i mean you have there's no other way there's no way of looking at the picture and telling how far is x going to go or or whether you're going to hit the switch curve in time one or time two or whatever, right? So you have to solve it, and we did solve this equation in class. So I want to—I expected that he can solve it. In fact, even on the exam, uh, because it's a separable equation, right? I think in class we didn't use k or r; we just use x times y minus x. But um, right. So I wanted to go through this. If you haven't done it, I mean, I. Have, not seen actually in the homework uh, anybody solving a logistic equation, uh, but it, but it gives us you get the um, okay and and now you know what x is at each time t. So what you can do is you can then look at the switch function and and tell or switch curve excuse me switch function and tell whether that function is going to stay positive for all times or negative. Yeah. Um, for the homework, I mean. Yeah. Okay. We can rewind the tape and, and take a look. I don't remember that. It's been so long ago, right? Um, hopefully, it wasn't edited out. Uh, okay, but granted, I mean, uh, qualitatively, it's fine, and, and I didn't, you know, I did, I did give you points for that, but. Um, to really tell whether we have optimal, right? To really tell what is the optimal tr uh, strategy, what is the optimal uh, control, then, then one needs to um, go one step further, right? Uh, so there's some, some solving differential equations in here. Um, anyway, so that's... Uh, that's about that. And I think um, I think one one uh, one piece which almost well again I haven't seen it in the homework and, and I didn't really expect it but I put it there just to see if you read the, everything that I, I asked for uh, it was what is the range of initial population that would actually uh, uh, allow you or actually require you to, to do some fishing, okay? And uh, it turns out that, how, how do you find that out? Again, it's quantitative, it has to be numbers. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you have to, do, to go with those two equations or two systems, right? One for, for the one value for U star, one for the other value for U star. And ask yourself when, during that period of zero to one uh, year, say, um, you can actually achieve your solution to actually hit the, the switch curve, right? So I think uh, the answer is a little slightly more than a hundred thousand. Okay, and again, it's hard to tell from the graph. I mean. It's true from the graph you see, well, it has to be like 100,000 to have any sort of um, 
reasonable, well, to have any any sort of um, hope to 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 uh, have a profit. I mean, to do some harvesting and have some profit. Uh, but you know, it's it's close to that, but it's not exactly that. Okay, so. Uh, everybody knows how to solve a logistic equation? Hmm? Not everybody. Well, but somebody? Everybody is somebody. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, k equals 1 and r equals 1? I, I don't know which lecture it was, but... Uh, Uh, not not integrating factor, but it's separable, right? So um, yeah, I'm not going to browse through what which uh, lecture it was, but um, if you printed the notes, then you will see it. Okay, um, so that's and again, any sort of subset of these is good. I mean, setting up the problem, trying to solve, right? If you can get to, you know, the type of, of, of optimal control, and then if you can get to the op optimal trajectory, right? So all of these are sort of, um, uh, I mean, uh, the problem itself can be very complex, and, and kind of succeeding in any, like, any of this part is, uh, should be an accomplishment. So, so I mean, I'm saying this because on the exam I'll I'll have as I said in class a portion of setting it up and then uh, and then at home to uh, to solve it to, as to what, whatever extent you can yeah. For solving differential equations. Well, yeah. I mean, I know you want to. Yeah, I'd say first order, separable, integrating factor. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, no, you can you can make up the. Whatever mistakes you have done. So there are, um, are they doing? Yeah, yeah, but but I mean at home you can I mean you start fresh. I mean, um, yeah. Anything else? Okay. So let me. Uh, um, yes, please. Second order. Hmm. No, because we, you see, we prefer first order. We prefer always to write as a system. Um, now, am I going to ask you to solve a system of differential equations with exponentiating things? Probably not. Um, or at least not in the in the in class for sure. You know, because you need to find the um, um, you need to find the, J the Jordan canonical form, right? Or the form of the exponential e to the ta, okay, and you can do this. Uh, let's say using MATLAB, but yep. I don't know. Okay, let me let me let me find this now and then. Um, okay, before we get to number seven, so let me say. Um, you will have a question on a Lagrange multiplier. I mean, uh, which you should rejoice, right? Because these are these are straightforward, direct. Uh, but again, keep in mind where in the context we we had this in the context of uh, of optimization uh, with constraints and uh, with parameters, right? And we did sensitivity analysis. So this was. This this question here was related to the sensitivity to the constraint parameter, right? Which uh, was called what the shadow variable, right? the shadow uh, shadow price in the, in the context of 
money, right? Um, also, it has to do with the adjoint variables, but as I said, we're, we're not talking about that too much. Uh, okay, and um, so that would be one problem. Another problem will be, so, so there's going to be a problem on uh, continuous and a problem on discrete optimization, uh, excuse me, discrete dynamical systems, right? So I think this one here is a discrete dynamical system, but again, it is a, it is a dynamical system with one variable, right? With one state variable. So it's a one-dimensional problem. That's why I used little g here, right? But um, the criteria for stability, we've talked about it, you know, in the context of systems, but if it is just a one one component, one variable, then what would it, what is the criterion for the stability of an equilibrium? Which, by the way, here, what does it mean equilibrium, first of all? It means you start with an equilibrium is, if you start there, you stay there for all times, right? So, why is this not something equal to zero? As it is in the continuous case. Because the way it's written here, so for discrete systems, uh, my son played with this, so now everything is messed up here, I think. It's nice to do drawing here without messing uh, too messy. So, okay. So, um, for discrete dynamical systems, of course, we we wrote it for uh, even for a uh, um, you know x could be you know x one x two x n of course. Um, we also wrote it as so g of x n or x n plus f of x n, right? And if you have it uh, in this form, then what would be a steady state or an equilibrium? Would be when x n plus one is x n, so so f of x n is zero, right? But if it's written like like this, then it's simply when um, so a steady state, so equilibrium. is when um, x star is g of x star or is found by solving this right so it means solve uh, x equal g of x which may be a system or it may be a single equation right and all those solutions of this matrix equation if you want is uh, or vector equation or system uh, is, an, is an equilibrium or steady state, right? And then the stability uh, for each equilibrium is given by what? Hmm? For if you have a system, we said that it's um, it's the eigenvalues for all eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix evaluated at that equilibrium, right? So obviously, uh, in fact, this is asymptotic stability, right? So, uh, of course, if n equals 1, that is, it's just a function. And I don't know, we use superscript or subscript. superscript so um, then solve you solve this and get equilibrium right steady states so my handwriting hasn't improved on the contrary um, and the stability Let's see, what's the Jacobian when it's one component? Simply the derivative, right? G prime at x star. And what are the eigenvalues of this matrix, one by one matrix? If 
If you have a matrix that's one by one, what is it, what are the eigenvalues? I have a matrix. I give you a matrix three. The number three, I, th I think it as a, I think of it as a matrix. It's three, right? There's a value, right? If it's a two by two matrix, then of course you have two eigenvalues. But if it's a one by one matrix, that's already diagonal, so it's so that's the eigenvalue, right? So that's why this is so this is the only eigenvalue. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous to say, but of this matrix, one by one matrix. Uh, so the the criterion for for stability is is what that this thing in absolute value has to be less than one. The derivative of g in absolute value has to be less than one. Okay. Now, what would be actually for a continuous dynamical system? I think we must have talked about that. The real parts have to be negative, okay? But um, so for a continuous, so as a co to contrast, we'll come back to this uh, discrete. But to contrast with with continuous dynamical system in 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 one dimension. Well, what's a dynamical system in one dimension? Again, remember, we, we've really pretty much talked about two-dimensional or higher. Um, but for one-dimensional, then it would be, well, I think we have to stay autonomous. So it has to be an equation of this form, right? Of course, the steady state have to be such that f at x star is 0. So it's basically, I don't know, so if, let's say if the if Right hand side, the function f is uh, is like this. Um, well, how do you want it to be? Like logistic, I think x x times one minus x, which is like this, right? Actually, let me do this. So, f of x is r x one minus x over k, just to. Okay, so this is quadratic, right hand side is quadratic in x. It has two zeros, one at zero, one at k. So these are the two eigen, uh, the two, the two what? Two steady states, right? How do we read the, the stability of? So we have to look at the, uh, the um, Jacobian of the right-hand side, f, right? It's f prime at x star. And ask ourselves, is this positive or negative, right? So if it's positive, this means unstable, right? Why don't I put the real part? I mean, I should have a real part. It's a one by one matrix uh, with a real entry, right? So the eigenvalue will be real. But in general, is the real part of the eigenvalues have to be negative to have stability? Okay. So, yeah. Is it true that if we had a negative complex part or a matrix part, but a positive, like a positive imaginary part, then the negative part, it would still be stable? Yeah, it doesn't matter what the imaginary part is, as long as the real part is. Uh, is negative. Okay, the imaginary part only tells you how it spirals in one way or the other. Um, okay, so again, based on this, can you tell which one is stable and which one is unstable? Well, what's the what's the slope? What's the derivative here and what's the derivative here? Well, obviously. 
it's it's negative. The derivative is negative at k and it's positive at minus at zero. So this is going to be unstable and it's going to be stable, right? And we knew this, right? Because uh, the the logistic um, the it's not the phase portrait, but the uh, direction field of the solution curves actually point this way, right? X versus T. So K is, is asymptotically stable. Zero is asymptotically is, is unstable. Okay. All right. So anyway, keep that in mind. Uh, these are two different things to look at. But now coming back to a uh, discrete system. So um, so in the problem, it's kind of an in interesting thing and that's why I kind of included it, is we've talked about Newton's method, right? Newton's method was, 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 was for what? Finding zeros of, a, of a function, right? F, little f. Uh, what was that method asking you to do was to start with an initial guess and iterate this equation, right? Um, so let's say if you, if you want to approximate the square root of 3, this means you look at the solution uh, at the 0 of f of x equals x squared minus 3. So when you plug this in here, I think in the solutions we show what that is. But you can, you can uh, come up with a dynamical system that is underlying um, or it's explicit, right? I mean this one here. Okay? I don't know if you're Scientific calculator actually uses this rec uh, this uh, iteration to find uh, when you hit square root of three, but it gives some it has some sort of algorithm to approximate that, right? So it does this like a thousand times, and hopefully you're going to get a very good approximation for the square root of three. And you can you can try this, right? You can go to MATLAB and do a loop and and figure this out. Um, there is a better way to visualize this, and I don't know if it's on this. Maybe not. But uh, so there is a, actually a visual way when you have a discrete dynamical system that has only one component. You can actually plot this successive numbers instead of uh, making like a list. You can do it visually. So I'll show you in a second. Um, but the question here was, what is the steady state for this, right? So what is a steady state? Or, or actually is, well, this is g, so when you set this equal to x, basically it means f has to be 0, right? So this means the, uh, the, uh, the root that you're trying to approximate is a steady state for the system, right? And then the next question is, what is the stability of that steady state? Well, you look at g prime at x star, and you see if it's less than one in absolute value or not. That's all. Okay. And uh, guess what? I think Part E shows you that it's always the case. Of course, I think one one has to say that f prime cannot be zero at the same time as f. Otherwise, this doesn't make sense. So, um, okay. So I don't know if you follow this, if you've seen it or not. Uh, if you can look at it. Um, is that g prime at x star is always zero, meaning that, and zero is less than one. That's right. That's the important part here. So the discrete, the Newton's iteration, the Newton's method, the iterations, the Newton's method, always is going to uh, converge to the to the uh, to that zero, provided what. It is. Hmm? We assume that. But remember, when we talk about Newton's method, we uh, uh, we we said the guess needs to be very close. I mean, it has to be relatively close. 
Otherwise, you can get into a, uh, into a, uh, an iteration that doesn't converge, right? So, so again, this this doesn't contradict that that those those cases. It says this asymptotically stable. It has to be. You have to be. It doesn't say how close you have to be, right? Just to be. There is some range around this uh, square root of three that you have to start with, right? Sink. I think it's called a sink, or basin of attraction, right? So remember those. Pictures, you know, in the continuous system, this is a little, you know, it's for discrete, it's slightly different. But for continuous system, you look from the top and you see a stable equilibrium, right? That's whatever the collection of um, initial conditions that get attracted into that is the basin of attraction for that stable equilibrium. So, yeah. Okay, so kind of interesting, but I don't have. So let me show you. Um, okay, let me show you this graphically because, in fact. Uh, I do this in problem number six. So problem number six is similar. Is the script system? Um, what was it? It was some sort of harvesting. No, the first one was just fish population doing its thing, right? But it wasn't logistic. It wasn't okay. It wasn't Newton's method, right? It was totally different. It was just population at a certain time. I don't know every week, right? Depends on the population the previous week by this by this rule, okay. And the four is just chosen. I mean, because I made it up, so uh, may not have real world significance. But it's some sort of uh, maximum sustainable population, okay. But not as this is not logistic, so it's not okay. Uh, <coughs> so the same the same questions we ask is. What is a steady state population? Okay, and that's that's fairly easy. Uh, you solve x equals g of x, right? Uh, and what's the stability? Well, g prime. And you you look. I mean, you evaluate g prime at the equilibrium, not right. It's only at the equilibrium that you want uh, the stability. So it turns out one again. One is unstable. The one at zero, and the one at three is. Asymptotically stable. So, so here's the picture, and I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna run this code. And again, this would not be a in-class part, obviously. But um, so, let me show you the picture, and then I'll show you the code. So, the picture actually sh does what's called a cobwebbing. Uh, it's just a kind of a, a, a technique to visualize what happens with that population at time zero. So take a look at this. So if I start with a pop, x1 to be 1, that's my um, initial condition, not a guess. It's, right? Just initial population. Um, then what is it going to be at the next time? Well, it's going to be the height of this, right? Because uh, this this graph this is the graph of of g of the right hand side. So obviously you know that's how you evaluate g at one is going to be this much right, which I think is two. So then what happens is we draw a horizontal line until it hits the this line at 45 degrees, and then we move it kind of instead of on the vertical we move it to the horizontal and we say so two is the new population level right. And then we would have to draw another line until it hits the, the graph again, right? But again, you can just go like this. And now it's going to be whatever it is. I don't know, 2.5, 2.7, whatever, right? So it doesn't show you the numbers, but it shows you. What, what does it show you? It shows you that what happens as time as the number of iteration increases. Um, This, would be, this is going to be the, 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 the values of the population, right? So visually, you can see what happens. It actually goes towards the steady state. And that's because the steady state 3 was stable, right? Whereas this one was unstable. So no matter how close you start, okay, if you start at 0, you're going to stay there, right? But no matter how close you are but not 0, 
You see what happens? You're moving away. Okay? So, of course, you can do any of this when you have a system of two, two components, two variables. So this is specific for, for one dimensional one. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, let's just do this for the, um, the Newton's method. So I think you can just copy this. I didn't post this code. You should be able to just copy this here. Oh, I hit it there already. Okay. Whoops. Well, uh, you have to be careful because it's not catching the ends, and that's pretty important, right? So. So, so you see the uh, the output. But let me change this now to what was the the other one? Can you, somebody tell me for the finding the square root of three? Uh, x squared plus three divided by two x. Yeah. So I'm I'm basically looking at. G. So I'm looking at the, the dynamical system as. Is this right? Okay. Okay. So um, let's see. So this code actually does four different. You see, initial guesses. But let's just start with one. So square root of three is one point seven three. I don't know, let's start with zero. Um, bad choice. Zero is a bad choice, right? Because that's unstable. Okay, so um, 0 0.1. Okay. All right, and um, I think you have to tweak some of this so you can see the whole picture. Um, I don't know, let me pick um, one, two, and three. You see the only problem here is because you're going to lay out the values of x on the horizontal axis as well as on the ver vertical axis, you have to pretty much know how high you're going to get. What's the maximum of that um, function? So if I just do it like this, I'm, I'm going to miss a few. But A. Right, so you'd have to kind of readjust the, the size, right? It's not really 0 to 4, it should be 0 to wherever this goes. Okay, this is clear, right? This, this is capturing that thing. Um, so these, these are fine, these are close enough, but this one had to go a little bit higher. Okay, and then come back and then. But you can see everything kind of goes to that. Yep. Um, so, so again, this is. Uh, I'll just say we're going to talk a lot more about this after the um, exam. But here's here's uh, one that um, a discrete dynamical system that you might want to think about. Um, Uh, some constant, excuse me, g, x, n, where g is it's like a logistic map, um, but there is a problem with this. Um, it's not exactly the discretization of the logistic equation of the, of the, of the dynamical system, the continuous dynamical system. So again, just think about it like this. We're going to take it Take this like um, um, like it is, and if you want, I'm going to pick k to be four just to be on that um, four is the maximum sustained population. 
right? And uh, what else? I'm going to take a to be 0.5 or something. Okay. So again, by hand you can find out what the steady states, right? How do you find the steady states? Set that equal to x. Cancel x, but of course. Uh, x equals zero would become a, uh, a steady state, right? And then you would find another one because once you cancel x, uh, you're going to get what? A linear equation in x. So you're going to get two equilibria. Um, and then find the derivative at those points exactly. So let me just uh, put type it in here. So I'm going to use a times x times one minus x over k and a is 0.5 and k is 4, let's see um, oops what's happening? thank you wasn't like a was 0.5 was kind of small let me get a bigger one here uh, actually I do want something like 2 let's see what happens okay so I'm gonna close uh, well clear clear all okay oh, excuse me CLF I'm going to clear the figure so next time. Okay. All right, so you see what happens? Again, same technique uh, or same, same, uh, same tool. The two equilibria are where the graph of the function g meets the graph of the function x, right? g of x equals x. So you see the two equilibria. Do you see what happens with derivative at, of g at that point? Well, I think it happened to be just, in this case it was 0, because I picked a to be 2, but let's, let's pick a to be 2.5. Okay, so you see the, the slope of, the, of g, of the derivative, excuse me, the, slope of the, of the tangent. So the derivative of g at that point is what? Huh? Negative. But the fact that you get it to be asymptotically stable means it is what makes it to be asymptotically stable? It's discrete. Less than one absolute value, right? So in other words, it is negative, but it's it's greater than negative one. Yeah? So anyway, so and you can do this by hand, you can verify this by hand. But um, this is a tip this is a very uh, typical example of of um, of this logistic map um, where things are, are fine, they go to uh, the asymptotically stable. But if you change this a to like something, remember it was 2.5? Now if I change it to be 3, what's going to happen? This is still going to be parabola, right? But it's going to be a taller parabola. So, so not, watch what happens. What happens with equilibrium? Hmm? It's no longer stable because the parabola is kind of steep enough so that the derivative there is no longer less than 1 in absolute value. In fact, when you do the computation with those numbers, 3 for A and 4 for K, at that equilibrium, you're going to end up with the derivative being less than negative 1. That is, 
an absolute value is, is farther away from zero uh, than one. Okay, and you see then the what happens with the num with the values that are being generated by this iteration. They no longer converge, right? So it's you know, yeah. So so this is this is definitely showing you don't have any uh, asymptotic stability. You have unstable, right? And that matches that. What what else it tells you? We're going to talk about it after the exam. That's kind of start showing um, interesting. Like if you go get close to 3.4, uh, so so close to four, so a is 3.8. You're going to start seeing very strange things. Okay. And again, I just picked 20 iterations, but if I pick a um, hundred. Certainly, you see the, the, the parabola has become, at that point, at that point, at the equilibrium point, has become steeper, right? Even steeper than, the higher A is the steeper negative, uh, it becomes there, right? This is also, this is always unstable. I think this, uh, not always unstable, but if A is very small, I think both will be stable, but. Oh, no, I'm sorry. If A is really small, zero is going to be the only stable equilibrium. Okay, so this is kind of a different way of looking uh, at the dynamics of a discrete dynamical system. That's something again you don't see with face portraits. You don't see, right? It's just a different way to look at it. So it, it is. A, it is also an instructive way to. And again, you have the code. So if you. Um, yeah. So I shouldn't. I shouldn't have chosen 0.5. Just two. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, so I kind of showed you this problem number two um, and the problem number six. Now in problem number six, I'm going to jump a little bit, so we, we uh, finish this discussion with discrete dynamical systems. In problem number six, we, uh, ooh, oh, of course, sorry. Okay, I was on the right side. Um, the, the the other question was, what if you have some harvesting, right? Now, when you look at a problem like this, do you see any optimal control? Not really, right? It's just an optimization problem. Just simple optimization problem. Uh, because this this constant here, which is the harvesting effort, for instance, is assumed to be constant, right? <coughs> Each iteration is going to be constant. It's assumed to be constant, and it's just saying, you know, it's kind of the new population is the is given by the natural growth, if you want, right? Minus some of the effects of the harvesting. And again, you do the same thing, uh, stability, and uh, you find the range of, the, of, those, of that parameter, C, for which there is a stable equilibrium, right? And I think the parameter happened to be, again, these numbers may not be coming from any realistic uh, scenario, but uh, as an exercise, I think it's easier to see. Um, and again, the last question was, can you maximize the yield, which is defined to be the, I guess, is the amount of fish that you take out? Yeah. If you had sort of, if you were in a steady state, then the amount you take out at each iteration is going to be c times x of x, right? c times x. That's the term that you're subtracting on the right-hand side. So the question is, uh, what is the value for c of c that actually makes this maximum possible? Okay. Again, there's no, uh, there's no real uh, 
I mean, it's just a one variable optimization. You have a function and you differentiate in if that equals zero, right? And maybe graph it to make sure it's a maximum, not a minimum. Okay, why am I saying this is no, no optimal control? Or how can we make this into an optimal control for a discrete system? We haven't talked about that, by the way. Well, what would be the control first? The C, right? The amount of the effort, right? But then you would you would you would allow it to vary from iteration to iteration. Same with a continuous system. What do we do with a? How do we make a parameter into a control parameter? We allow it to vary in time, right? Same here. We allow it to vary in time, but the time is discrete. So it would be that we allow it to. Um, I mean, again, this is not not really the. Um, minus C I think we use K there G of X that's capital G of X K minus C K X K right it's whatever you <laughs> sorry it's it's a capital G. I, I'm just so so. Why am I even saying this? So this is for um, um, version of number six. And so you will not see this on on your exam, and the reason is, is simple. Um, we haven't really done opt optimal control for discrete dynamical systems, right? But. It's important to realize that what you have is much simpler than, than what it could be. That's always a good thing to to realize how easy it is. Uh, I mean, how, how much more complicated it could be. Um, so you could have a, a variable parameter, right? That you could actually set to be again have some constraints, and then it could be it could be that for a certain period of that. Harvesting, you don't do any harvesting, and then you do full harvesting or things like this, right? Okay, but when C is constant, that, that, that was just like algebra, okay? Now, it's very much the same. The same comment applies to the other discrete dynamical system that we had, uh, which was, what problem was it? Seven. I'm sorry, I'm seeing uh, only one half of this. Okay. Okay. So, for problem number seven, again, the problem looked like half a page, right? But what's the essential piece of that, um, of that problem? Is that you have a dynamical system, discrete dynamical system, that has that parameter u, which is a, a fraction of, you know, amount of pro, uh, interest that is kept, uh, you know, savings versus what, it, uh, and the rest is moved into checking. Okay, so so that is just a simple dynamical system that tells you how you move uh, from, I don't know, day zero to uh, whenever the, the interest is compounded. Okay, discrete dynamical system. Uh, so I think the question was simply, you know, can you write down x uh, sub k for any k? Uh, remember, we did this actually. We did this when we had a system. If we had a system, let me remind you that because that's also. So if you have a system that was linear, x n or g, I mean, can use g. But if this was a matrix, 
n minus 1. Or I guess I should put n plus 1 just... Okay. So if, you're, if you're dynamic, this discrete dynamical system is actually linear in, this, in the previous state. Right? So this is a multiplication, matrix multiplication then. Can you write what xn is at all times? You have to be able to. Hmm? Well, it's, it's every time you just multiply by another g to the left, right? So it's just going to be the nth power of that matrix times the initial condition, right? So again, this is the nth power. It's, it's g multiplied with g multiplied with g and so forth, right? Remember, we use this to conclude the stability, right? We said uh, that's, that's what uh, implies that uh, eigenvalues have to be less than one absolute value to have uh, asymptotic stability of the zero, in this case, the only equilibrium. So that's, the only, that's, that's exactly the thing that is being uh, done here. And where is it? Somewhere. Uh, I lost it. Um, what is it? Where is it? Sorry. Oh. Yeah. So, so that's all, that's all this is, right? Just multiplication with a fixed factor. Of course, u is assumed to be constant. If if u were not constant, you would not have this luxury, right? Okay. So, take a look at. Okay. So, what are we, what are we asking? We're asking to maximize or find u. Find u, so find that percentage that you want to reinvest, or that is to leave in the savings, so that the accumulated amount in your checking is maximal. At the end of the period when this is when this is accrued, when this interest is accrued, right? So it's just the sum of these things. Uh, I gave you that that formula so that you can you can uh, simplify this and take, just take a look at what this function as a function of u has become, right? So now your experts, expert, expert eyes say, how easy is, is it to, to maximize this with respect to u? Uh, x naught is fixed, so that's that's like a something multiply. This this right you can erase this. R is constant. Little n is the number of times uh, interest is accrued a year and capital N is little n times the number of years, so it's n times t. Okay, and it, let's say n is 365. U shows up here, here, and here under this power, right? So how do you, how do you maximize this if you, have to, if you had to by hand? It's a one variable. Right, but by hand you would you would try it's a function of one variable. Take a derivative, symbolically, set it equal to zero, right? Um, right, or graph and C. Okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what happens if, if if n is one or two or something, then you probably can do it by hand. But if n is very large, even computers can have troubles finding this. In fact, um, I believe if you do this, I think you can do it symbolically, and I think I've done it symbolically. You can plot this, and you can find that the fraction has to be actually zero. So it's not, and it's not because the derivative of a at zero is zero, it's just because it's like that's where the maximum is. Okay. In fact, you see this. I mean, this guy is defined at zero, but you have to do some work to to see that it's defined at zero because u is in the denominator, right? Uh, but it turns out that indeed, you know, 
Again, for a fixed value of n, this is the maximum, right? Was this something that you would have uh, guessed? Maybe. Um, what's the conclusion here? Fraction, so you basically have to take everything out, all the interest. that is accrued during each period should be moved to the checking. Meaning that the principal always stays the same in the savings. Right? Is this something obvious? No, in fact it's not true. This is true if, I think I, I, I make the note here. Did I? No, I didn't make the note. Um, I think this computation is done when, t, when capital T is 1 or something. Did we say what it is? I think it was t equals 1 or 2. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So for a short period of time, if you want to maximize your spending kind of money, then every, you know, whatever you, you uh, it's like in the stock market, right? What, if, 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 if your money grows, you take, uh, you always keep it at the same level, and the rest you just take it and spend it, right? For the short period of time. But if you, if you do exactly the same thing with this little n times t with, with t is like 30, like 30 years, what's gonna, guess what's going to happen? It will not be profitable to keep taking it out. It will be more profitable to live for a while, do investment to grow that amount, and then at some point you have to, like when you get close to your retirement, start taking all the interest that's been accrued. Um, out, okay. So there's going to be some, some, uh, some change in there. Um, ten years. Okay. So for for t equals ten, this this uh, turns out to be the case. In fact, in the next problem, uh, and we're getting close to the end here. Um, the next problem was that continuous version. And again, this is one thing that I I expect that you can actually set it up. Um, was that you had so by the way this the continuous version is basically what you, what you get from here when you let little n go to infinity so this is continuous compounding so you can kind of see that it it matches um, and one two three four five six you know you can do those steps uh, very easily Hamiltonian algebra system, terminal condition, uh, maximizing H, right? Switch function. That's pretty much, well, uh, that, that should be doable, right? Now, what do you do after that is, again, case by case. Um, and I think, I think we go here. And I, yeah, here's what I, I talk about. Um, so if T is 10, then even in the continuous compounding, it's most profitable to take out everything, right? By the way, can you take out the continuously? No, but but you can get a formula to know at each quarter how much to take out, right? Um, and that will maximize your your cash, spending cash. But if it's if it's if there is a there is a threshold, there is some some value for t, like if it's three is thirty years. Then you see um, you're going to have to switch from total reinvestment to no reinvestment. Okay. Any questions? Should we kind of expect to have a tiny maximum principal on the test? Yeah, of course. Uh, setting it up. Um, there are. Well, there, there are many other sources. I think now it's time is short. So I would say uh, take a few other examples, whether they are in the book or in that hundred num hundred plus list of problems. Make sure you can set it up. Um, by the way, if there, if if it's a problem that has four variables, four state variables, right? This means it's going to have four state variables, four adjoint variables. Uh, Setting it up is pretty much all you can do, all we can do, right? I mean, so don't expect that to take that home. So during the exam, you don't don't necessarily think that 
you know, you're going to have to deal with the same number and have to pursue it further, right? The whole thing is, is uh, so setting it up is one thing, um, but if it's, if it's one variable or two variables, again, two variables can be complicated too, but uh, two state variables. I'm uh, this was two state variables, right? But again, uh, you see the system is not too bad. And by the way, what's the critical thing when you, when you build a Hamiltonian to look at? Well, after you've built a Hamiltonian, what do you, what's the thing to look for immediately? To see, to see if you can maximize it easily, right? I mean, to see what kind of things are needed to maximize this as a function of u alone. Now, granted, u could actually be two components, in which case you'd have to maximize h with respect to a function of two variables. But you, we won't do that. Right? But you could have a control that has two components, two components control. Right? In which case, but the, 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 the important thing is this is chapter one in our book. Right? It's, it's, it's constrained or unconstrained optimization of a function of one or several variables, in our case, one of, of one variable. Right? So if it's linear, that's obviously not necessarily the easiest, but it requires some, some constraints on the, on the, on the control. Right? And then it's bang bang. If if it's nonlinear, if it's like quadratic, then it has to be quadratic in the right with the right sign, right? I mean, what if it's quadratic like this, and you still have to maximize? Then you're going to have to look at one of the endpoints. So you have to have a constraint. You see, so everything kind of the, there's things that you you should look in the problem that you need in order to move for, forward. Um, if, it, if it's quadratic like this, then you don't need to have a, a constraint on you, right? Because you're always going to be able to maximize it. Okay, adjoint system, one can write down, right? Again, past this is... Um, and by the way, solving the system is... Oftentimes in my solutions, when I write the, the adjoint system, I, I, I already, we already solve it, right? But but this is not necessary. This is not necessarily the the sequence, right? Once you write the adjoint system, you can you can immediately write the maximize h, right? In fact, you can maximize h right after you write it, so that you know what u is, and then know if u is in terms of psi. Because what if it's not in terms of psi? You don't have to solve the adjoint system. Now, is that going to happen? I don't think so. I think you're always going to have psi. Otherwise, why, you know, why have the adjoint system? Okay, uh, so I talked about, did I miss any of the problems? Kind of went, uh, I think we didn't talk about... Four is just like the standard matlab. Yeah, four, I said standard fare, I'm sorry. Um, five, um, yeah, we're out of time, but uh, again, there's always a second part after setting it up that I wanted to pay attention. It's not just pictures. We're not just looking at pictures, nice pictures, and draw conclusions. It has to be based on some quantitative reasoning, some computation. Okay? All right. Um, I should be available tomorrow if you have questions. Um, I think early afternoon, so... You, you get your take home when you leave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then it's due on Monday. It's due on Monday, yeah. But there's an in class part, so make sure you don't miss that. Thank you. Thank you.